10 wealthiest people in South Africa. To the world, Africa is seen as a broken economy because there are a lot of untapped resources, both human and natural. But South Africa still boasts as one of the strongest economies in the continent and has rich and affluent people. In actuality, a South African is the second richest man in Africa. You must put in a lot of effort and learn about money, how to manage it, and how to invest it for higher returns if you want to be like some of these men. The people on this list are all South African citizens who do not reside abroad. According to an insider story, billionaires can often afford to spend $80 million a year, and many of them invest their money in super yachts, real estate, remote islands, vehicles, and art. Due to the billionaire's desire for opulent purchases and investments, all of these industries are flourishing. As the world's wealthiest individuals looked for a safe and private vacation at a time when there were no other travel options, yacht brokers reported a dramatic spike in sales in 2021. The people on this list are all South African citizens who do not reside abroad. Welcome to Think Rich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe that entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. All right, let's dig into the countdown list. 10. Jani Mountain Jani was born in 1946 at Carnarvon, South Africa. He holds a bachelor's degree from Stellenbosch University where he studied accounting. Mountain, at 22, started his career as a clerk at PwC. He became a chattered accountant in 1973. In 1955, Mountain was fired from Senecal, Mountain and Kitshop firm he co-founded. This was before he founded PSG Group. Mountain has two sons, Jan and Pyatt, and a daughter, Charit. He resides in South Africa's Stellenbosch. Hyatt, his son, is the PSG Group CEO's. Jan, his oldest son, is a non-executive director of PSG and runs the PSG Flexible Fund. The Sauvignon Blanc wine that Mountain and the recently contentious businessman Marcus Juiced collaborated on include advertisements for their long-standing friendship. Juiced helped Steinhoff acquire a 20% stake in PSG, which helped Mountain repel an aggressive proposal from Absat Bank. His net worth fluctuates between $1 billion and $1.1 billion. In 2017, this entrepreneur established the Janie Mountain Foundation. This foundation typically funds nonprofits that promote societal change and engages in developmental activities. Each year, Janie plans to donate more than $6 million to various philanthropic causes in South Africa. He established this charity with the intention of aiding South African citizens. He had a broader dream, and starting this foundation was a part of that. 9. Ivan and Lynette Saltzman It is said that, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The Saltzman family is held together by this African saying. It brought Lynette and Ivan Saltzman fame, wealth, and happiness. Dischem is one of the fastest growing pharmacies in South Africa, and it was created by a husband and wife team. It specializes on products for beauty, healthy eating, sports nutrition, and general welfare. In Mondier, a southern suburb of Johannesburg, pharmacists Ivan and Lynette Saltzman established the first Dischem retail pharmacy in 1978. Due to restrictive laws, South African pharmacies had not up to that point supplied certain product categories. Thus, they established the idea of a budget pharmacy. Dischem established their first location outside of South Africa in Windhoek, Namibia, in 2014. Dischem Pharmacies Limited Group listed 27.5% of its capitalized share capital on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in November 2016. In the history of the exchange, it was the second largest IPO, with 165 locations and additional four in Namibia and one in Botswana. Dischem is the second largest retail pharmacy network in South Africa. In 2019, the chain's total revenue was $2.5 billion. Dischem offers items under its own private label, conducts online sales, runs a loyalty program, 
and the group has a wholesale section. The firm stated in 2016 that it would increase the number of locations by 2021. One third of its stores were under three years old at the time. Ivan and Lynette Saltzman have a combined net worth of over a billion dollars. Hate. The late Alan Gray. As a billionaire businessman and philanthropist from South Africa, Alan William Buchanan Gray established the Alan and Gil Gray Charitable Trust, the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation, a nonprofit organization, and the privately held investment management firm that bears his name. His net worth in 2017 was estimated to be $1.8 billion before he donated his interest in the Alan Gray investment management firm. Gray was born in East London, a city in South Africa, in 1938. In the 1890s, his family moved from Aberdeen, Scotland, to Butterworth, which was then in the Cape Colony. When his grandmother, who had attended the University of Aberdeen, was elected mayor of Butterworth years later, she made history as the country's first female mayor. Gray claimed that his grandmother contributed significantly to his future success by ensuring that the family placed a high value on education. He attended Selborne College for his senior year of high school, Rhodes University for his accounting degree, and Harvard Business School for his MBA, which he attained in 1965. Dyslexic Gray was well known to be. Gray began working with Fidelity Management and research in Boston shortly after graduating from Harvard, where he remained for eight years. During the 1962 financial crisis, he earned a reputation as a successful Contra Ryan investor. In 1973, he came back to South Africa and established Allen Gray Limited in Cape Town. The business initially specialized in investment advice before expanding to serve institutional clients. In order to concentrate on investing in global markets, he then founded Orbis Investment Management in London in 1989. The business moved its headquarters to Bermuda two years later. Orbis was in charge of $30 billion worth of assets by 2015. Similar to Orbis, Alan Gray, a sibling company, expanded to become the largest privately held investment management firm in South Africa, managing over $35 billion in client capital, making Gray, with a net worth of approximately $2 billion, one of Africa's richest individuals. Since its foundation, Alan Gray and Orbis have had success on par with Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway in terms of return on investment. Stephen. Stephen Saad. Stephen Bradley Saad is a South African billionaire businessman who is the founder and chief executive of Aspen Pharmacare, the largest producer of generic medicines in Africa. During apartheid, he began his job at Quickham the Corporation that distributed prescription medications in black townships. He became a billionaire at the age of 29 when he sold his Coven Zurich stock for $3 million. He co-founded Aspen Pharmacare a public business trading on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in 1997 with Gus Etridge. It has grown to be the continent of Africa's top manufacturer of generic medications. He is the company's CEO, while Gus Etridge is the deputy CEO, he also sits on the board of directors. He was one of Africa's 40 wealthiest persons in 2011 with a net worth of $640 million. In 2013, his stock portfolio saw a 75% increase. Currently, he is valued $1.4 billion. Additionally, he chairs the Sharks, a rugby union club in Durban. He also sits on the board of trustees of his alma mater, the Durban High School. In 2014, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University for the positive role of Aspen in the city of Port Elizabeth. Six, Michio LaRue. In 2001, Michio LaRue launched Capitec Bank. Today, he controls around 11% of the company. The bank, which transacts on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, aims to serve the growing middle class in South Africa. He continued as a board member when his tenure as Capitec's chairman of the board ended in 2016. Capitec Bank is a South African retail bank. As of August 2017, the bank was the second largest retail bank in South Africa, based on number of customers, 
with 12,000 customers opening new accounts per month. According to the 2015 Chief Financial Officer's report, the bank has over 6.2 million clients and has 500 retail locations nationally. It also has 3,418 ATMs that it owns or works with. 309,000 of these consumers use online banking, and 3.5 million use mobile banking. In the past, LaRue oversaw Boland Bank, a little neighborhood bank in the suburbs of Cape Town. As of 2022, the current net worth of Mitchell LaRue is $2.05 billion. Five, Kuz Becker. Jacobus Petrus, Kuz Becker is a South African billionaire businessman and the chairman of media group Naspers. The company operates in 130 countries and is listed on the London Stock Exchange and Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It has the largest market capitalization of any media company outside the U.S., China, and India. As of April 2022, his net worth was estimated at $2.3 billion. After working in advertising for a while, he graduated in 1984 with an MBA from Columbia Business School. He developed one of the first two-pay television systems outside of the United States as a consequence of a project paper along with a few other young colleagues. Mnet and its affiliated businesses, like MultiChoice, eventually reached 48 nations throughout Africa. He was a founding director of the mobile communication business MTN in the 1990s. Becker was appointed CEO of Naspers in 1977. Naspers was one of the original investors in the Mnet slash MultiChoice company. The other shareholders were acquired by Naspers. The market value of Naspers increased from roughly $1.2 billion to $4 to $5 billion during his leadership. 4. Patras Motsep Patras Motsep is a South African mining billionaire businessman. Since 12 March 2021, he has been serving as the president of the Confederation of African Football. He is the founder and executive chairman of African Rainbow Minerals, which has interests in gold, ferrous metals, base metals, and platinum. He sits on several company boards, including being the non-executive chairman of Harmony Gold, the world's 12th largest gold mining company, and the deputy chairman of Sandlin. In 1994, the same year Nelson Mandela was elected the nation's first black president, he became the first black partner at the legal firm Bowman Gilfillan. Motsep founded Future Mining, which offered contract mining services, including clean gold dust from inside mine shafts for the Fall Reefs Gold Mine, and put in place a system of worker compensation that combined a low base salary with a profit-sharing bonus. This was done as the new government started to promote black empowerment and entrepreneurship. He acquired marginal gold mines from Anglo Gold in 1997 during a period of low gold prices and favorable financing circumstances. For $7.7 .7 million, Anglo Gold sold Motsep's six gold mine shafts, enabling him to pay back the debt with future profits from the business that is now known as African Rainbow Minerals. This was replicated in other transactions, and Motsep established a company to start purchasing the active mines that would eventually become the source of his wealth. Together with two of his colleagues, he founded Green and Partners Investments in 1999. The black economic empowerment regulations that were implemented following the 1994 elections were crucial in securing Motsep's position in South Africa's mining sector. African Rainbow Minerals merged with Harmony Gold Mining Limited in 2002 when the company was listed on the JSE Security Exchange and the business became known as ARM Gold. Additionally, Monsep founded ARM Consortium Limited and African Rainbow Minerals Platinum Limited, which ultimately shared ownership equally with Anglo American Platinum Corp. Limited Monsep served as Teal Exploration and Mining Incorporated's chairman starting in 2005. Motsep also serves as Vice Chairman of Sanlon Limited, Chairman of Ubuntu Botho Investments, and Non-Executive Chairman of Harmony Gold Mining Co. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry of South Africa was presided over by Motsep. Motsep founded Ubuntu Botho Investments, or UBI, in 2003. Sanlon, a provider of insurance and financial services, and UBI engaged into a Black Economic Empowerment Agreement in 2004. 
That agreement came to an end in 2014, once the debt was settled and UBI acquired 13.5% of Sanlum. But as Sanlum's Black Economic Empowerment Partner, UBI still holds an 18.1% voting stake in the company. Then UBI established African Rainbow Capital as a fully owned subsidiary. Johan Van Zittel, a former executive of Sanlum, serves as co-chief executive of ARC. Time Bank, industrial conglomerate Affirmat, agricultural firm BKB, telecommunications provider Rain, opulent real estate developer Val Devai, and a minority position in Alexander Forbes, the pension fund administrator, are just a few of the more than 40 businesses that ARC holds stakes in. He has a net worth of over $2 billion across all his investments. 3. Christoffel Wies Christoffel F. Hendrik Wies is a South African businessman and billionaire. He made his money from consumer retail. Following graduation, Wies worked as a lawyer at the Cape Bar for a while before becoming a director of Pepker, the outlet store his parents helped build. ShopRite, which he oversaw, began as a chain of eight supermarkets in Cape Town that was bought for $122,000 and developed into a multi-billion dollar company through a number of acquisitions and expansion initiatives in the company's first 30 years of operation. After helping ShopRite acquire Distributor Senda, Wies began expanding his company by franchising more ShopRite department store locations. In 1997, he also paid one rand to acquire the floundering OK Bazaars from South African breweries, adding 157 supermarkets and 146 furnishing stores to the business and creating jobs in the region. In 2011, Wies's ShopRite stores were considered to be the sixth overall favorite brand, with a third most valued brand in terms of community equipment in South Africa. In addition to ShopRite, Wies owns more than 1,200 corporate outlets under various names. Shares of ShopRite rose by 50% on the South African stock market from March 2011 to March 2012, with Wies making a $1.5 billion profit. Since 2006, Wies has presided over Invicta Holdings Limited. Wies was formerly the 69th most successful person in South African history and the 11th most successful businessman in his chosen industries, accounting, banking, finance, consumer goods, fashion, and retail. Since taking over as chairman of Pepker in 1981 and beginning as an executive director for the retail chain Pep from 1967 to 1973, Wies has a 4-4% ownership stake in the company. In South Africa, a cheap retailer called Pepper was established in 1965. Wies is married to Carol, lives in Cape Town, and has three children. His son Jacob Wies works for Pepper and is expected to take over from him when he retires. Wies owns various properties, including a private game reserve in the Kalahari Desert and the prestigious wine producer, the Lorenzford Estate. The Cape Town Sakamer awarded with the title of Business Leader of the Year, while the South African Council of Shopping Centers awarded him with the prestigious Pioneer of the 20th Century Award. He has a net worth of $6 billion across all investments. 2. Nicholas F. Oppenheimer Nicholas Oppenheimer is a South African billionaire businessman. He was formerly the chairman of De Beers Diamond Mining Company and of its subsidiary, the Diamond Trading Company, and former deputy chairman of Anglo-American. He is the third richest man in Africa. In 1968, Oppenheimer joined Anglo-American. In 1974, he was made a director, and in 1983, he was made deputy chairman. He left in 2001 but he continued to serve as a non-executive director until 2011. In 1984, he was named vice chairman of the Central Selling Organization, which is now the Diamond Trading Company, and in 1985, De Beers Consolidated Mines. In 1985, he was also named chairman of the Diamond Trading Company. When the family stake was sold to Anglo-American, he retired as chairman of the De Beers Group from 1998 to 2012. Oppenheimer appeared on the Sunday Times Rich List 2018 as the 23rd richest person in the United Kingdom, with a reported fortune of $5.5 billion. 
He was ranked as the richest person in South Africa on Forbes' list of the world's billionaires for 2019, with a fortune reported as $7.3 billion. And again, on its 2020 list, with a reported fortune of $7.6 billion in August 2020. A large portion of the Oppenheimer family's charitable activities have been focused on protecting the history and cultural significance of the Southern African region, as well as on broader community upliftment in the fields of education, health, nature protection, and the arts. The Brenthurst Foundation was founded in 2005 by Nicky Oppenheimer and his son Jonathan Oppenheimer as a method to contribute to the discussion surrounding strategies and policies for enhancing Africa's economic performance and facilitating inclusive and sustainable development. The family has also long been involved in environmental and conservation issues. The Oppenheimer family partnered with De Beers to establish the Diamond Route in 2006 to maximize the potential of their properties for conservation, research, and environmental awareness purposes. The Diamond Route links eight sites across northern South Africa, stretching from Immaculand on the west coast to Kimberley, north to Tiswalu in the Kalahari, and to the Brenthurst Gardens in Johannesburg, eastwards to Ezinvilo Nature Reserve and northwards to the Venetia Limpopo Nature Reserve in 1. Johan Rupert Johan Peter Rupert is a South African billionaire businessman who is the eldest son of business tycoon Anton Rupert and his wife Hubert. He is the chairman of the Swiss-based luxury goods company Rickimont and the South Africa-based company Ringro. Since April 2010, he has been the CEO of Compagni Financier Rickimont. Rupert and family were ranked second richest in South Africa on the 2021 Forbes list, with an estimated net worth of $7.7 billion. Rupert was raised in Stellenbosch, where he attended the University of Stellenbosch and the Paul Roos Gymnasium, majoring in business law and economics. He left school to pursue a career in business, but in 2004 the university bestowed an honorary doctorate in economics upon him. His honorary doctorate from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University was given to him in 2008. The Financial Times and Barron's have both referred to Rupert as reclusive since he avoids public appearances and rarely grants interviews. He was dubbed Rupert the Bear by the same publication in 2006 for foreseeing a global economic collapse. It is one of the top three golf courses in the country and is ranked number 25 worldwide. In order to help friend and fellow South African Gary Player collect money for various children's charities, he has also participated in the annual Gary Player Invitational Golf Tournament. He serves as chairman of the South African PGA Tour and chairman of the South African Golf Development Board. In 2007, he was elected into South African Sports Hall of Fame and in 2009 was inducted into South African Golf Hall of Fame. Following his younger brother Anthony's death in a car accident in 2001, he took over the El Warmarin's wine estate. Anthony was head of Rupert and Rothschild Figurants. Rupert initiated a project to enhance the farm in memory of his late brother. He served as a trustee for the Southern African Nature Foundation, the Institute of Directors in Southern Africa, Business South Africa, Die Suid Afrikaans Academy for Wet and Scab and Cunts, and the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. He was also a council member of the South Africa Foundation. He was a member of the International Advisory Board for Daimler Chrysler. Johan Rupert shares his father Anton's passion for conservation, and he is an environmentalist as well. He chairs the Peace Parks Foundation in addition to protecting around 25,000 hectares in the Groff Rienet region. Thanks for watching this video till the very end. There you have it. Those are the wealthiest people in South Africa. Really wish a woman would have made the top 10 list. Of course, we had Lynette Saltzman, but she was pretty much tied with her husband. Let us know your thoughts on the gender pay gap in South Africa and income inequality in the comments below. Again, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't already, and we'll see you in another video.